Good day class, welcome to the Serology Lecture Series Part 2. This is the last part of your Serology and I am tasked to discuss your labeled immunoassays. So if you can uh, recall on the previous video lecture, I was able to discuss the basic principles and examples of your precipitation and your agglutination and how does your antibody will bind your antigen by forming the latest and or a antigen antibody complex that is visible to us medical laboratory scientists we can identify if the patient may have uh, be infected with a specific uh, infectious agent in or any diseases such as overexpression and or production of a certain protein and or a deficiency of a certain analyte. Okay, so we will move to a more serological part uh, because in the previous lecture, we uh, are more on the basic one, like the precipitation and the agglutination. Now, uh, this is somewhat more uh, complicated than the, as we know that more complicated uh, procedures requires an expensive uh, reagent. And then an expensive reagent requires a uh, high uh, or high and or technically uh, equipped medical laboratory scientists. Then uh, skills plus theory should be coupled so we can understand uh, how should we interpret a specific immunoassay uh, for the identification of a specific disease and or infectious agents. So in this discussion, uh, you can follow my uh, video lecture using your reference book. Stevens. And uh, in this video lecture, I'll be discussing more on the labeled immunoassay. So then uh, the objective of the lesson will fall first define and describe what is the analyte. So you'll be uh, familiar with the term. And then second, distinguish between a competitive and a non-competitive assay in the context of your labeled immunoassays. And then third, Explain the principle of your radio immunoassay. You have your enzyme immunoassays, you have your fluorescence immunoassays, and your chemiluminescent immunoassays. So those are your labeled immunoassays that will be covered in this video lecture. And uh, four will be your individual activity. You need to create or create a diagram of the different assays discussed in this lesson. So I hope that at, although this one is not uh, a graded activity, but I highly uh, recommend that after uh, listening to this video lecture and watching this video lecture class, you create your own uh, algorithm and you create your own uh, diagram okay, in the reactions of each uh, labeled immunoassays. So this is the outline of our labeled immunoassays. So as I previously uh, presented earlier with our objectives, we'll be discussing four labeled immunoassays. You have radio immunoassays, enzyme immunoassays, fluorescence, and uh, chemiluminescence. And then under area or radio immunoassays, uh, there, there is only one. You have your competitive. Uh, your enzyme immunoassay is somewhat complicated because it is divided into two, homogeneous and heterogeneous. And under your heterogeneous, it is subdivided into three. You have your competitive, non-competitive, and capture assay. But in the essence of your enzyme immunoassay, uh, capture assay, uh, I will not be discussing this one. I'm just like presenting this to you so that you have an idea about the laboratory uh, sessions that you did with the uh, capture assay, I think will be more enough. And then next, we'll be discussing your fluorescence immunoassay that is divided into two. You have your direct and indirect. And lastly, we'll discuss your chemiluminescence assay. Okay, allow me to start with your radio immunodeficiency assay. But before that one, we'll discuss first the definition of terms so you'll familiar with uh, uh, terms that I'll be using uh, with this video lecture. So first, you have your affinity and avidity. 
Along it to recall the uh, therm affinity, which is the initial force of your attraction. Uh, that is also very crucial here in your in, uh, labeled immune assays, not only with your precipitation and your agglutination. And of course, the ability where the accumulated strength of the bud. This is very crucial class because the one of the steps a procedure of your immune uh, of your labeled immune assay is washing uh, by the use of your water. So when you wash the uh, wells bound with your antigen, and if they are or if they have a low avidity, then they're easily washed. And therefore, uh, we need to have a great interactions between your antigen and your antibody. Also. Uh, with your labeled immune assays, these two uh, words are very crucial. Uh, you have your sensitivity and specificity. So when we say sensitivity class, it's the ability to detect the lowest amount of your analyte that can be measured. When we say analyte class, that's our uh, uh, sample of interest. Okay, so it could be antibody, it could be e antigen. Okay, from the patient. So when we say sensitivity, even like if the antigen okay, present in the patient sample is only two, okay, not literally two, pero maliit lang yung concentration class, the method can still uh, detect that one. So that's your sensitivity. For specificity is the ability to detect only one distinct analyte among others. So if you wanted to identify your HIV, then therefore... Pag sinabi natin high specificity, uh, there will be no cross-reactivity class. Then, uh, if kung positive ka dyan, then therefore, you are positive with HIV and then no other uh, possible uh, infectious agents. We need to also uh, differentiate your compet competitive from your non-competitive because uh, during the discussion, I'll be using these terms. Okay, so first you have your competitive. These are labeled antigen that will compete with unlabeled patient antigen for a limited number of your antibody binding sites. That's the main reason why they are called competitive because we allow the reagent to compete with the antigen. When we say non-competitive non-competitive class, uh, the unknown patient antigen is allowed to react with your known antibody. Then secondary antibody with a labeled bind, label will bind to the primary antibody. So if you can observe here with a non-competitive, so since hindi, hindi tayo nagko-compete class, what we usually do is that for the non-competitive, it records a secondary antibody. Because the secondary antibody carries the enzyme that will utilize and or eat up your substrate that will produce your color action. With the competitive naman class kasi, uh, nagko-compete sila sa isa't isa with a specific, if, if you have your antigen that will compete to your antibody, then therefore, meron siyang inverse reaction. So if kung mataas yung uh, binding here, then therefore, mababa yung ano natin, uh, patient concentration or analyte natin. Later, I will explain that one thoroughly. So, para mas maintindihan nyo. So, now let's start uh, with your radio immunoassays. So, with your radio immunoassay, this is very easy class because if you can observe here, I prepared a diagram, but later I have an animation so you can really understand this one. For your immunoassay, you have a radio immunoassay here. Then for the label, we'll be using your iodine-125 and your iodine-131 and your H3. These are the most common uh, radioisotopes naman class. Okay, we call this one radioisotopes. So for the detection, we'll be using your scintillator in your gamma counter. <coughs> and then for the relationship class, the gamma emission is inversely okay, proportional to the concentration of the analyte. Why? Because if you can observe here in your radio amino assay class, this is competitive, right? Because you allow this two antigen to compete to one antibody here, okay? So for example, this is your iodine-125 and then this will be your analytes, okay? That is your S, okay? For your sample, okay? Uh, you have your hormones, 
it's your proteins and or your vitamins. When we try to incubate that one and you allow uh, the radioisotopes, because the number of your sample here is limited, diba? So if you try the if you try to check and compare, mas madami yung uh, label na radioisotopes compared with the sample. So during the incubation, uh, the, the, the competition is more favorable with your radioisotopes compared with your sample. Then during washing, we allow the unbound to be removed and then the uh, radioisotopes using your gamma counter or scintillator will uh, emit your gamma rays. And then, kung mas mataas yung gamma rays na na-detect natin using your scintillator or gamma counter, you have your inverse proportional cast. Then therefore, mas mababa ang concentration ng ating sample. Okay? So, in the animation form, because I prepared this one, if you can observe, this is the well, then you have your antibody. So, you have your... Uh, uh, radioisotopes class. Uh, for example, this is one is one two, uh, iodine 125. And then, you will add your sample here. Uh, first, you will add your uh, uh, your iodine here, then it will emit, right? So, this is a natural uh, reaction kasi wala pa siyang sample. Okay? But here, if you can observe, you have your radioisotopes here. Then, the number of your uh, patient sample is relatively higher compared with your radioisotopes, then, syempre, yung competition will allow your patient sample to bind okay, efficiently compared with your radioisotopes. Then, therefore, ah, sorry, class. Then, therefore, uh, kukunti yung ano, gamma rays na naproproduce, di ba? Ang sabi, pag mababa daw yung gamma rays na naproduce class, mataas yung concentration ng uh, sample mo. If kung mataas yung emission ng gamma rays natin class, then therefore, mababa yung patient sample natin. Okay? So, yun lang yung radio uh, radio assay natin using your radioisotopes. Then, let's move to your enzyme immunoassays. For your enzyme immunoassays class, okay, tinawag siyang enzyme because we'll be using your enzyme here, specifically your horse, radish peroxidase, and or your alkaline phosphatase. But among the two, your uh, horse radish peroxidase is the most commonly used labeled enzyme. To detect the reaction class, we'll be using your spectrophotometry. And then uh, we also allow the reaction of your enzyme to your substrate because your substrate will produce a color reaction. So if you can observe here, okay, so you have your direct, indirect, and capture assays, the right? and we will be discussing that one. So for your direct, it does not require a secondary antibody. Then therefore, the antigen will bind to the primary antibody. The primary antibody have your uh, enzyme here that will eat up your substrate. Then therefore, class, the primary antibody will bind to the unknown. This is your antigen. Okay? Compare with your indirect assay class that the unknown is your uh, antibody here and then you have your known antigen that will bind to your secondary, secondary antibody, antibody that carries your enzyme. Then, pag nag tayo ng substrate, it will release a color production naman class. Okay? So, about the more class, I have an animation here so you can appreciate it later. Okay? Then, uh, next, you have your heterogeneous and you have your homogeneous okay? enzyme immunoassay. So, when we say heterogeneous, okay, it requires a physical separation of the free bound analyte. Okay, compare with the homogeneous that there is no separation step necessary. Okay, then nawawala lang daw yung enzyme activity after binding. Okay, so let's move to your competitive okay, immuno, enzyme immunoassay. So this is one uh, of the best uh, method because the sensitivity is up to 10 to the power of 9 kg per uh, ml, which is very low. And therefore, uh, maganda siya kasi uh, if you have a very small amount of your drugs as an analyte, then we can identify that one. So, 
for your immuno assays, the interpre interpretation is the enzyme is inversely proportional to the uh, concentration of the test sub substance. Okay, di ba? Sabi ko kanina, pag, pag meron tayong competition, we check the proportional, inversely proportional ba siya in or directly proportional. Okay? But in the case of competitive, kasi meron siyang ano, dalawang antigen to your uh, antibody, then inversely proportional. Okay, the analyte of uh, interest class is a antigen, okay, small antigens that are relatively pure, such as your drugs and your hormones. Okay, allow me to present this one so you can really understand your competitive uh, enzyme immune assays. So now we allow your enzyme here. This one is your enzyme. We allow your enzyme here and to your uh, sample patient here to compete with one antibody here. Tama? So supposedly kasi class, if uh, the antibody will bind here, uh, if you will add your substrate, then magkakaroon ng color reactions. But in this case, kasi in my presentation, uh, I make the presentation that the patient sample is more numerous compared with the enzyme. This one is an, a molecule enzyme class. Okay, if you can see the green one, that's an enzyme. Okay, later we will add the substrate and it will eat up, right? So what will happen, class, kasi may competition, the higher the number of the analyte or the molecule will win, correct? So in, the, in this case, madami kasi yung patient sample, then therefore, when we try to incubate that one, the patient sample will win. Then during washing, natatanggal na lahat, then when we add your substrate, and then, wala namang enzyme class because the, the enzyme will try to eat up this one. And therefore, uh, wala color reaction. Kung walang color reaction class, ba? If there will be decreased color reaction, inverse ng uh, decreased class is increase. Okay, analyte detected. Okay, that is now your competitive enzyme immunoassay. For your non-competitive, kasi kanina, di ba, competitive yun. So for your non-competitive assay class, we call this one in the uh, This one is also sensitive, specific, simple, and cheap. And then we can also use the non-competitive uh, enzyme immune assay for screening for HIV, hepatitis E virus, and hepatitis C virus. So then therefore, class, uh, the interest, the analyte of interest is the antibody. So, if the, the analyte of interest is the antibody, then therefore the well should be bounded for the class with antigen. Okay, so this one is your antigen. So, in the, uh, I would like to specify one. Like, for example, this one is your HIV. Okay, then therefore, your reagent or known antigen, HIV, is bounded to your well. And then we wanted to uh, identify if the patient uh, and uh, if the patient sample uh, has anti-HIV or antibodies. So we allow the patient sample here. This is a patient sample na now. So if this one is uh, anti-HIV, this anti-HIV will bind to the HIV antigen, correct? And then during washing, it will be removed, the unbounded one. Can we, can, can we see the reaction here? No glass. Diba? Kasi we cannot see the, uh, ano, there, there is no precipitation, there is no agglutination, then therefore this is not visible. Kasi one, one antigen, one anti antibody interaction lang. So, sir, how can we identify this one? So, with the non-competitive uh, enzyme immune assay, as I mentioned before, there is the addition of her secondary antibody. The secondary antibody class carries the enzyme. So, for example, this one is your horse radish peroxidase with her secondary antibody. Her secondary antibody is directed to your antibody of interest. So if kung merong antibody of interest, the secondary antibody will bind that one. So can we still found, uh, can we still observe the reaction here? No. Diba? Kaya the, the last step of your non-competitive immuno, uh, enzyme immunoassay together with the competitive is the addition of your substrate. So if this one will be added and in contact with your 
enzyme, it will be eat up and there will be a change of color. Okay, so the higher the concentration of the color or the intensity of the color, the higher the concentration of your antibodies or the higher concentration of your analytes. Okay, so I hope that you understand that one class. Next, you have your capture uh, immuno, uh, capture enzyme immunoassay. So with your capture uh, immuno and uh, capture enzyme immunoassay, it falls under your sandwich immunoassay. Then therefore, class, the analyte that we will be using is either uh, antibodies and or your cytokines. So in my presentation in the well, I'll be identifying your antigen. Like for example, this one is your cytokine. So I want to identify if the uh, uh, I want to identify if the patient is producing a IP10. Okay, so IP10 is a cytokine. So this one is antibody directed to the IP10. Correct. So we will add a patient sample here, and then if the patient sample contains the analyte which is your IP10, this will bind to your IP10 antibodies. Can we uh, observe the reaction? No. Correct? Kasi uh, hindi naman sa precipitation, hindi din sa agglutination, kasi one, one at the one antibody lang siya. So, hindi siya visible here. So, as the name itself na sandwich will still be adding your secondary antibody with an enzyme class, and then it will be now sandwich. Now, after this one, we cannot still observe the reaction. Then, therefore, we still need to add your substrate. Then, your substrate will be eat up with your enzyme, producing a high uh, intensity of your color action. Then, therefore, the higher the intensity of the color, the higher concentration of your analytes. <coughs> so, now that will be your capture. Okay enzyme immunoassay or sandwich immunoassay. So I hope that you uh, appreciate the uh, presentation that you can uh, easily understand. Let's move on with your homogeneous okay, uh, enzyme immunoassay. Uh, we call that this one an enzyme multiplied uh, immunoassay technique. So with here, you have your change in enzyme activity after binding. Okay, that's the principle. So the enzyme activity is directly proportional to the analyte concentration. For homogeneous, this is still competitive. So we allow the antibodies and also the two competitors. This is your sample and your enzyme here. Okay, so in this case, uh, marami ang uh, labeled na molecules mo with an enzyme. Compare with your sample. So, when they will try to compete with the antibody, mas mananalo si label molecule class with the enzyme. Then, therefore, uh, the antibody will bind to the enzyme, conforming the enzyme. Then, therefore, when we try to add your substrate, so, kasi naka-close na yung enzyme mo class, so, walang color intensity. So, if there will be a decreased uh, color intensity, okay, sorry class, then there will be a uh, directly proportional activity here to your analyte concentration. Okay, so example of our analyte concentration is your hormones, okay, therapeutic drugs, okay, drug of abuse, and in serum, and in urine sample. Okay, so again, uh, the principle is the enzyme activity is directly okay, proportional to the analyte of your concentration. Then let's move to your fluorescence immunoassay class. For your fluorescence immunoassay, you have still two. You have your direct and saka indirect. Still the same with your enzyme class. If you can observe with your indirect, it requires a secondary antibody that may carry your fluor, uh, uh, fluorophore. Okay, in the case of your enzyme, yung daladala niya enzyme. In the case of your fluorescence, yung daladala niya fluorophore. So ano yung mga 
uh, common uh, fluorophor na ginagamit natin. Plus, you have your fluorescein ITC uh, with the wavelength of 490 to 495. And you have your tetra, methyl, okay, rhodamine. So that is around 550 uh, wavelength. So in the case of your fluorescent immunoassay, ang dala-dala nila, fluorophores. In, this, in the case of your enzyme immunoassay, ang dala-dala nila, enzyme, specifically your horseradish peroxidase. So that, that detection uh, machine that we'll be using is your fluorescent microscope because we have your fluorescent here. Okay, so th this is first used to immunohistochemistry called your immunofluorescence assay, or you have your IFA. So let's discuss first your direct immunofluorescence assay. So if you can observe your class, okay, the unknown is antigen. So the analyte of interest is either, uh, example is you have your Legionella pneumophila, okay, a bacteria, and then you also have your Chlamydia trachomatis. Okay, this is now your unknown antigen. Then you have your labeled antibody. So saan galing yung analyte natin? Plus, it could be coming from your body fluids and your tissues. So what we'll do is that we'll prepare a slide, a microscopic slide, and then we will try to fix that one with your body fluids and your, your tissue. So if your body fluids contains your Legionella pneumophila and your Chlamydia trachomatis, so this antigen will be bounded to your microscopic slide. So next, ang gagawin... Uh, the, the main reason why we need to bound that one to your microscopic slide class because the machine that we'll be using is your microscope. So then therefore, kailangan slide yung gamit natin. So we need to fix your microscopic slide to your body fluids containing your Legionella pneumophila or your Chlamydia trachomatis. Okay, because that is the unknown antigen. So what we do is you have your antibody labeled with your fluorochrome here. So if, for example, the microscopic slide that is fixed with your body fluid contains your chlamydia trachomatis or legionella pneumophila, this, secondary, uh, this antibody, labeled antibody, will bind here. And then during washing, we allow the unbound labeled antibodies to be removed. And then there will be fluorescence that we can check that one in your fluorescent microscope. Okay, so meron na siya fluorescence due to your uh, fluorescein naman class. Okay, using your fluorescence microscope. Okay, yun yung reaction niya pag direct immunofluorescence assay. And your direct immunofluorescence assay is somewhat different with your indirect. Kasi with your indirect naman class, the analyte here, uh, the 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 uh analyte here class is still uh no class the analyte here is with your antibodies can also be auto antibodies class with their ata and you have your ana and then uh then therefore if viral antibodies ang meron tayo dito the known should be antigen ibabaliktad naman talaga always yan if kung ang analyte mo is antibodies dapat yung known mo antigen tama Okay, tapos, if kung ang anun, uh, anun mo is antigen, para antigens, then therefore, uh, your agent mo or known mo should be antibodies. But there are some cases, class, that uh, you have your known antibodies that will bind to your anti-antibodies. You still have that one. Okay, ba? Kasi you always think that, ah, okay, dapat baliktad sila. But there are some also procedures, advanced procedures, that uses your antibodies to detect your antibodies. So here, the, this is a known antigen already class that is fixed with your microscopic slide. Okay, so for example, I want to identify your hepatitis C. Okay, so then therefore the slide should be embedded with your known antigen. So this is your hepatitis C virus. Then therefore, we allow the patient sample, okay, the patient serum that may contain your viral antibody, specifically your anti-hepatitis C that is produced by your patient. And then, when we try to add that one, of course, the antibody, okay, this one coming from the patient, will bind to your known antigen. 
Then, during washing, dapat ma-remove yung unbound natin na mga sample antibodies here. And then, can we still see the reaction here, class? No, we cannot, right? So, what we do is we add the secondary antibodies okay, here that contains our fluorochrome. Okay, and then after that one, this antibody is directed to your hepatitis C kasi yung example ko class is the antibody with your hepatitis C. Okay, then this will bind here and then during washing, maririmove and what will happen class? It will be uh, produce a fluores fluorescence that can be observed in your fluorescence microscope. So now that is your indirect okay, immunofluorescence assay. Then let's move to your homogeneous okay, fluorescence uh, immunoassay, or we call this one a fluorescence okay, polarization assay in our class. Okay, this uh, procedure is somewhat uh, ano class, uh, difficult to understand i think in a student level you can check that one on your book okay uh page 160 and this is figure 10 uh dash 7 of your book so allow me to visualize this one for you okay so uh, according to your figure 10 dash 7 that is your fluorescence a polarization immunoassay so if the reagent antibody here, this one is the reagent antibody, is combined with the patient antigen in fluorescence labeled antigen. So, competitive siya. So, meron tayong sample here class. This is the patient antigen. And then, yung uh, umiikot-ikot class, that is your fluorescence labeled antigen. So, we have your competition here. Okay? So, binding causes these molecules, okay? So, if the antibody will bind here, okay? So, the binding causes these molecules to rotate more slowly, okay, in solution. So, pag slowly daw class or stop yung rotation niya because of the antibodies here, okay, there will be an increasing the amount of the pol polarized light that they return. So, ibig sabihin class, pag hindi nag-rotate, nag-increase yung polarization. Okay, so yun yung uh, explanation niya sa figure 10 7 na A. So how about the B, figure 10 7 na B? So here, if you can observe, when the patient antigen is present, so ito yung polymerized uh, light, diba? So if the still have your uh, antibody here, then uh, when patient antigen is present, more than, Okay, so the P more than the labeled, okay, fluorescence, labeled antigen here class. So what will happen? Okay, so when patient antigen is present, okay, more labeled antigen will be unbound. Okay, so ibig sabihin class, na raw rotate pa rin tong, uh, fluorescence labeled natin here. So these molecules will rotate more quickly in solution, giving off light in many directions, then therefore the polymerization is decreased. So if the polymerization is decreased, the, the amount of the fluorescence measured is inversely proportional. So ibig sabihin, class, pag mababa yung, flores, uh, pag mababa yung polymerization natin, ibig sabihin mataas yung concentration ng sample analyte natin. Okay, so that is your uh, fluorescence polarization. Assay. Lastly, uh, we'll discuss your chemiluminescence immunoassay class. So with your chemiluminescence assay, this is oh, again the same with the uh, uh, enzyme immunoassay and fluorescence immunoassay. Kaso magkaiba lang talaga yung label because in your chemiluminescence immunoassay, ano yung gamit natin class? Correct, you have your luminol. Acrimidium esters, routine and derivatives, and you have your nitrophenyl oxalates. But among the mentioned labeled uh, immuno, uh, luminescence immunoassay labels, uh, luminol yung gamit natin class. Okay? Then usually by oxidation of your hydrogen peroxide and your enzyme. Uh, however, since your chemiluminescence yung gamit natin, magkaiba yung detection 
uh, machine. So, ang gamit natin class is photo uh, multiplier tubes. And then, the analytes of choice natin class, if you will use your uh, chemiluminescent immunoassay, you have your cardiac markers, hormones, okay, vitamin D, and total IG. So, allow me to uh, present that one. So, since your analyte is e antigen, like for example, cardiac marker, uh, bigay na lang tayo ng example class, uh, vitamin D. You want to identify the concentration of your vitamin D. Then, therefore, uh, this one should be e anti-vitamin D because you want to identify if the patient produces a lot of vitamin D. So, this one is your vitamin D. Then, we allow the vitamin D coming from the patient to bind to our antibodies against your vitamin D. So now, since we cannot found or we cannot observe your action in your class, then therefore, we need to add your secondary antibody. Then the secondary antibody, instead of an, uh, an a class enzyme here, we use your labeled luminol. And then, what will happen class? It will bind here with your sandwich. Tama? So we cannot still check the reaction. So what we need to do is to add your substrate. Okay, then adding the substrate, interacting to this one, and then there will be a color change. Hindi naman siya competitive class, then therefore directly proportional yung concentration. Yun lang talaga yung isipin yung class. Competitive ba siya or non-competitive? Kung competitive siya, ibig sabihin, the relationship should be inversely uh, proportional. Pag ano class? Pag uh, non-competitive siya, then therefore, directly proportional. So that's the end of my presentation class. I hope that you learned something with my presentation. I was, I, I tried to, uh, I tried my best in presenting the uh, immunoassays part 2, which is your enzyme. Lab, uh, you have your labeled immunoassays as a uh, animation. So since it would be very difficult for us to prepare that one in the laboratory session because it's too expensive. So I hope that you appreciate that one. And then uh, congratulations for partially uh, finishing your serology part although this this topic is not the uh, last part of our uh, immunology serology course class but basically you covered the basic uh, methods in identifying your analytes that we discuss in your in it in your adaptive and then uh, now we can use these methods to identify if there are deficiencies and or if there is a over uh, reaction of your uh, immune system such as your hypersensitivity reaction so again thank you for listening uh, for your immunology uh, serology sorry class yeah your serology uh, series lecture too and i think that's it uh, and i'm signing off uh, thank you for listening and uh, watching the video lecture and good luck with your final exam. God bless. Bye-bye class.